What's up guys, my name is Andrew. I noticed a lot of interest regarding investing in stocks via ETFs on my channel. So today I wanna to talk about how you can find and compare the best ETFs that fit your own investment strategy as a European investor. Here's what we'll cover in the video. First, I'll tell you my own history with ETFs and the thought process I went through, which may help you as well. I'll of course also tell you about my favorite ETF, which I ultimately settled on, which probably most of you already know by now. Then we'll compare accumulating and distributing ETFs to help you figure out which version is more in line with your goals. And lastly, I'll show you how to find the right ETFs for your investment strategy and the tools I use to compare different funds to find the best performing ones with the lowest fees. As a bonus, I'll also give you a list of what I believe to be the best ETFs for specific strategies. Before getting to it, don't forget to hit the like button if you wanna see more videos like this. And if you'd like to support me and get started with investing in ETFs, you can find links to my favorite brokers in the description below. All right, so in this video, I'm making the assumption that you're a long-term investor like me with a time horizon of 10 years or more, but of course you're free to speculate in specific markets or do things differently. So the first decision we need to make is how do we want to invest? Do we want several ETFs covering specific regions of the market or do we want one ETF covering the entire world? That decision is yours to make. I'll just tell you my own perspective. When I started investing into ETFs in early 2017, I started with four different ETFs. I bought the S&P 500 covering the top 500 companies in the US, the Stocks Europe 600 for stocks in Europe, the MSCI Emerging Markets to cover emerging markets including China and India for example, and the MSCI Pacific to cover the Pacific regions so Japan, Australia and Hong Kong for example. So why did I do this? Well, I thought I could outperform a simple worldwide ETF with this strategy. By rebalancing regularly and allocating new money to markets that didn't perform as well, hoping that they would outperform later on. However, I quickly realized a couple of downsides. Depending on the broker you use, you usually have fees when buying or selling ETF shares. So the more ETFs you have and the more often you trade, the more of your money gets lost in fees instead of actually being invested. Not only that, when we sell shares of an ETF that went up in value, we now realize some profits and in most countries that means we now have to pay taxes on those profits in the year of the sale. If instead we just buy and hold long term, our money that we would have lost on taxes can still stay invested and work for us for a much longer period of time until we actually need to sell it, for example, when we're retired. Of course, I'm making general assumptions here, so make sure you check your local tax laws. Also, rebalancing and deciding which specific ETFs to buy whenever you have money available is too much of a time investment in my opinion. I think you can get a much better return on your time by putting more hours into actual work. And lastly, we only know after 10 years or more if the strategy we chose was actually the right one and we need a strategy that we're going to stick to instead of jumping from one to the next as I have also done in the past. Ultimately, you know yourself best, so ask yourself this question. Let's say you're buying four ETFs and one or two keep underperforming the market year after year. Will you start doubting yourself and your strategy? And will you stick to your strategy or would you maybe have been better off just buying one or two ETFs and saving yourself the extra time? Well, getting back to my own history with ETFs, my wife and I switched to a two ETF strategy to simplify our portfolio shortly after the first one. The strategy consisted of two popular ETFs that you often hear mentioned in the finance community. 80% were in the MSCI world, covering developed markets all over the world, and 20% were in the MSCI emerging markets, covering emerging markets. And while there's absolutely nothing wrong with that strategy, we realized that not even that was simple enough for us, so we switched to a single ETF strategy. As a result, ever since the beginning of 2019, my wife and I have only been buying a single ETF, the Vanguard FTSE O World. The ETF covers the entire world, investing into over 3,460 companies from both developed and emerging markets. We just love the simplicity of buying a single low-cost exchange-traded fund and being invested all over the world. And in the financial independence community, you'll often hear from US investors, which usually have a very strong home country bias. As a result, they often only invest into the S&P 500 index, which covers the 500 largest companies from the US. And I also know some people from our own community who really like that strategy. Here's my issue with that. While only investing to US companies has worked very well for the past 30 years, also due to the incredible growth that American tech companies have had, nobody knows what the future looks like. Who knows if companies like Apple and Microsoft will still be as profitable and relevant in a decade from now, or if they will be replaced by other companies, for example, from China, India, or one can hope Europe. I'm just not willing to bet my savings on the thought that the US will keep leading the market 
in the future as well. It could happen, but maybe more and more companies that we interact with daily will be based in other countries and continents. And since I don't know the future, I like the idea of having all my bases covered. That way I can profit from the growth of the worldwide economy as a whole, no matter where it happens. And if the US stock market keeps doing well, then great, I'll still profit from it, as it still makes up around 56% of the Vanguard FTC All World Index on a market cap basis. Okay, now that you understand my way of thinking and and how I got here, you need to ask yourself one question. Do you want an accumulating or a distributing ETF? In short, distributing ETFs pay out the dividends they receive from the companies they hold in the index out to you via distributions on regular intervals. While accumulating ETFs reinvest the dividends that they receive by buying more shares of the companies in the index. Let me show you some more pros and cons. With distributing ETFs, it can be psychologically motivating to receive dividend distributions regularly. You also receive regular cash flow without selling any shares, which is great if you'd like to spend that money, for example, if you're retired already. On the flip side, however, in most European countries, you're taxed on the dividend dividends you receive and most of the time you need to reinvest the dividends that you receive manually. Accumulating ETFs on the other hand are more tax efficient in most countries in Europe as the money you would have paid in taxes on dividends throughout the years can keep working for you within the ETF for a longer time. There's also no manual work needed to reinvest the dividends as that is done by the ETF itself. However, accumulating ETFs are less motivating when the market is down as seeing regular dividends might make you more likely to stick to your plan and not sell. There's also no cash flow unless you sell shares, for example, in retirement. I hope that clarified some things for you. Of course, when it comes to taxes, I can only generalize, so make sure you check out your local tax laws to make sure. Okay, now let's get to the last part that you've been waiting for, finding the right ETF. For this, I like to use just ETF.com and here, you can either just search for an ETF. For example, let's see, we want an ETF on the MSCI world, or you can even filter here on the left and just select the matching index. In this case, we don't want the other variations. We want the normal MSCI world index. Here on the left, we also can filter out if we only want an accumulating ETF or distributing ETF. For example, in this case, I'm gonna choose distributing. I also like to filter out the replication method as I only want to buy ETFs that have a full replication or a sampling based replication. These two are physical, while the swap based ones are synthetic ETFs, meaning they don't actually own the shares in the index. And now we can select a couple of them that have a low total expense ratio and a decent fund size. I like to choose ETFs that have at least 500 million in fund size. I'm gonna choose this one, this one, and this one. And I'm gonna press and compare selection. And here what we can do is we can do a chart comparison of their performance. Here we can see over the past year, for example, the MSCI World from HSBC performed slightly better than the one from X Trackers. And over a three year period, it had a 0.7% difference in performance. And over the longest period that we have available, a very, very negligible difference. So I would say either one of these two is fine. So now I'm gonna remove this one from our selection and then when we check each ETF individually here with the one from HSBC we can see that it distributes on a quarterly basis you can also see some previous dividends and when they were paid out in which months and at the top we can also get the ISIN number to buy the ETF or at the bottom we can get the tickers for different exchanges and with the one from X trackers we can see that it distributes annually so once a year and here we can also use the ISIN number or the ticker at the bottom to buy the ETF on the exchange and if for example we want to look for my favorite index the FTC All World and search it here as well. And we're gonna see we have two available from Vanguard, one accumulating version and distributing version. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to also show you why I don't like the high dividend yield index. In the end, what matters is not a higher dividend yield and higher cash flow, but rather the total performance, meaning the dividends and the capital appreciation in the ETF. And here we can clearly see that the normal Vanguard FTC World Index had almost double the performance of the high dividend yield index from 2013 to 2021. After doing a bit of research, comparing factors like cost, performance, and size, here are my favorite ETFs covering four well-known stock market indexes. For this, I chose the FTSC All World Index covering 3,960 companies from developed and emerging markets, the MSCI World, which includes 1,585 companies from developed markets, the MSCI Emerging Markets, which includes 1,397 companies from emerging markets, and another popular one, the S&P 500, which covers the 500 largest US companies. And here are my favorite distributing versions for those indexes. My favorite distributing version of the FTC All World is of course the one from Vanguard. And I put the ISIN numbers below so you can find them as well. For the MSCI World, I like the X-Trackers MSCI World 1D and the HSBC MSCI World. For emerging markets, I like the one from UBS. And for the S&P 500, we have the Vanguard S&P 500. Then we will look at accumulating ETF versions. Here we have the Vanguard FTC O World Index, the accumulating version. And for the MSCI World, we have the X-Trackers MSCI World 1C. And here pay attention, there's also one version that's synthetic, so swap based. 
least I don't like that one. Or the iShares MACI World, the accumulating version. For emerging markets, we have the X Trackers MACI Emerging Markets 1C. And for the S&P 500, again, we have the Vanguard S&P 500, but the accumulating version. Some of these are even on the Zero's Commission Free ETF list, which I'll link down below. Still, if you're investing long term, I don't think that whether or not you can buy an ETF commission free should be the deciding factor for which ETFs you choose. Also, those are simply my favorites based on different factors like cost, performance and size, there's nothing wrong with you going for other ETFs instead. And if you already have existing ETFs that fit your strategy, even if they have slightly higher costs, there's nothing wrong with holding on to them. We're usually talking about very small differences anyway. Okay, that's it. I hope this video helped you get more clarity on your ETF investment journey. Before you take off, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Also, if you'd like to support me and get started with investing in ETFs, I put a link to all my favorite brokers in the description below as well as everything else that I mentioned in the video. Thank you for watching and until next time.